Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. In today's journey, we are at Dias and we are heading towards Lucy in the parish of Hanover. Continue to sit back, continue to relax and continue to enjoy this journey with me. In the news today, now, there is all kind of scams taking place and over and over. I have come here and I have been warning persons to be aware of these scams. There are job scams. Buy cheap iPhone scams. You name it. Now, that female on your screen, her name is Kedeen Samuels, but she's popularly known as Ven. Ven was born on April 2, 1984, almost 40 years old. Ven is originally from the parish of Westmoreland, but she's living in Falmouth in the parish of Trelawney. Ven is a scammer and me not talk about no normal scammer. A lot of persons who have been swindled by Ven, they have reached out to me and I am sure that when persons see this report, the police, they will be flooded with complaints. Ven, she claims that she's operating a company named Global Staffing Solutions through this company. Then she promised persons to assist them in getting jobs overseas. She collects as much as 200,000 Jamaican dollars and 50,000 US dollars from persons. She also collects their passports. To the unsuspecting persons, everything seems legitimate, or should I say, then she make everything seems legitimate. But the truth is, this is a scam. Then, she was arrested and charged by detectives at the Montego Bay CIB office earlier this week. In this case, between September last year and mid-January, then she collected a total of 135,000 Jamaican dollars and 45 US dollars from a female, claiming that she would send her away on a work program. When the female realized that this was a scam, she reported the matter to the police and the police, they commenced investigations. Then, she was subsequently picked up by the police and she has been charged for obtaining money by false pretense. I am sure that a lot more charges will be laid against Chapa Ven. I will also be doing an interview with at least one of her victims. Stand by for that. In this next story, now, we are going overseas for a little bit. Because this one, very, very sad. The police in North Miami-Dade County in South Florida, they are carrying out investigations to ascertain what really took place early yesterday morning. Friday, February 2, about 2 o'clock. This took place along the I-95 in Miami-Dade County. We are told that the police, they received a 911 call from a passerby that a child was seen unresponsive in that SUV on your screen. Another call was received that a second child was in the car and that child was unconscious. Officers went to the scene and that three-year-old twin, they were found unresponsive on the back seat of the SUV. Their names are Melendit Cadet and her brother, Melendir Cadet. Their parents are both Haitian nationals. Their mother is that female on your screen. Her name is Sherlyn Alcime. She is 42 years old and she owns some businesses in the area. It is said that Sherlyn and her family, they had faced several eviction cases over the last two years. The case against the family home is settled but one 
is still pending against a business location. Persons are now wondering if that was what led Sherlene to do this because the police, they are reporting that Sherlene, she jumped over the railing of the on-ramp, landing on the tri-rail tracks. The tri-rail tracks run under the Golden Glades interchange. Sherlene, she tried to take her own life but she was not successful. She was rushed to the Aventura Hospital where she has been admitted in a critical condition. It is believed that Sherlene, she killed her three-year-old twins, then tried to do the same thing to herself. Sad indeed. Now, in this next story, earlier today, someone sent me that funeral program and a WhatsApp message. The message read, well, it's on your screen. The message said, Good day, Sir Papai. You remember the news that you carried last year? The police ordered them to take him out of the church to the grave to be buried. <laughs> you understand that? You don't? Well, the person on the program is a hoodlum named Randall Theodore Reed, but he was also known as Pecos or Ravers. Ravers was out on bail for murder. This was after he shot and killed that guy on your screen. His name is Deron Derrick Gale. He was 23 years old at the time. Deron, he was shot and killed at a wakeyard in the full view of many persons on the night of Friday, June 24, 2022. Ravers or Pecos, like he's known. He went to court and he was offered bail. On Sunday night, September 24, almost 9 o'clock, Ravers, who we are told, him not left him gone. He went to a bar in the Withern area of Westmoreland. He was armed with that illegal loaded gun on your screen. It's a black CZ 75BD Luger 9mm pistol. It was affixed with a magazine containing 8 rounds of 9mm cartridges. But Pecos, he did not know that a policeman was in the bar and the policeman he saw the illegal gun in Pecos waist. We are told that the police he tried to accost Pecos and Pecos he made the fatal mistake of pulling his gun. In a few seconds, Pecos he was put down. Now they rushed with him to hospital, but he succumbed to his injuries sometime later. So Pecos. His funeral service, it was scheduled for today at 11 o'clock at the Mount Shiloh Church of the Nazarene. Well, our information is that the police, they received intelligence that something was going to go down at the funeral. As a result, the police, they moved in and they ordered that the body be buried right away. Now, if you look on your screen, that is what was written on the flyer advertising the grave digging for Pecos. It says, All form of loss must be heartbreaking, but letting go is a meaning of loss itself. Peace will come from the memories of his love and affection that comfort you today and tomorrow. All family and friends. <laughs> In this next story, I carried a story on Tuesday, January 23. It was about an incident that took place the previous night, about 10 o'clock. It took place at Chantilly Gardens in the Savannah Lamar area in the parish of Westmoreland. So, what we have learned since I put out that story is that a security guard, he's popularly known as Okraman, and he's in his late 30s. He live alone at a house at Chantilly Gardens and it is said that this hard-working security guard, he used to work mainly at night. Whenever he left his house to go to work, hoodlums broke into his house and stole his stuffs. It is said that Okraman, the security guard, he received information as to who the culprits were and he might have repeated that information. As a result, the hoodlums, they got upset and they decided to dirt Okraman, 
anytime they go to his house and he was there monday night january 22 okraman he was at his home when two hoodlums entered one of them was armed with a ratchet knife and the other one he was armed with a gun the hoodlum with a knife he started inflicting some serious wounds to okraman's head Okraman, he managed to run off and the hoodlum with the gun. He opened the gunfire hitting Okraman on his left hand. Okraman, he ran away escaping from the hoodlums and the hoodlums, they made good their escape on foot in the area. Okraman, he was rushed to hospital where he was treated. We are told that his right hand, it was broken as a result. But guess what? On Monday, January 29th, both hoodlums were held by the police. One of them has since been charged. His name is Deshaun Antonio Bell. Now, if you go on Facebook, you will find Deshaun. His name is spelled D-E-S-H-A-U-N. Bell. Look for Deshaun Bell. He have about three or four profiles. Deshaun is 20 years old and he's living in the Chantilly Gardens area the other one who is known as Cooley. we are told that the police they are waiting on a certain event to take place before they charge Cooley man now as soon as he's charged i'm gonna be giving you his correct name the mayhem now in this next two stories we are learning that the st james police they have taken a guy into police custody in relation to these two incidents this guy I'm not going to tell you or show you who he is as yet. But what I can tell you is that this guy, he's out on bail for murder. As a part of his bail condition, the judge had ordered that he report on condition of bail at the Anchovy Police Station on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays. He went and reported on condition of bail yesterday, almost 12 midday. He drove a grey Toyota Axio motor car to the station about 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon. The same hoodlum and a crony. They drove to a house at Blue Hole in the Montpelier area. Their aim is to kill a guy who is building an apartment complex in the area. But guess what? A policeman and a licensed firearm holder. They were at the premises. It is said that they had gone to the property. To collect money from the guy building the apartment for ply and scaffold that they had rent to him. While they were at the property, the same grey Toyota Axio that the hoodlum had driven to the station earlier to report on condition of bail. It drove up and stopped. Two hoodlums came out of the car. One was armed with an M16 rifle and the other one. He was armed with a pistol. But guess what? They were surprised by the policeman and the licensed firearm holder and a shootout ensued. The two hoodlums, they managed to run back to the Axio and made good their escape. Neither the policeman nor the licensed firearm holder were hit, but vehicles that were parked nearby were damaged by bullets. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, 30 9mm spent shells and 12 M16 spent shells were recovered from the scene. Now, later in the afternoon, about 5 o'clock, that guy on your screen, his name is Junior Reed, but he was popularly known as Oyster Boy. He was born on September 29, 1994, 29 years old, and he lived at Flankers. In the parish of St. James. It is said that Ister Boy, he's a long time hoodlum. His name has been called on several murders in the parish of St. James. It is also being said that Ister Boy, he had decided to turn his life around because he had started a family. But you see badness? You see badness? It better if you not get involved in it. We are told that Ister Boy and other persons, they were sitting along Pele Drive in Flankers when a 
create Toyota Axio motor car, drove up and stopped. The information we are getting is that this was the same great Toyota Axio that was involved in the shooting at Montpelier earlier. Hoodlums jumped out of the car with guns in hands. The open gunfire hitting Oyster Boy to the left side of his neck and the left side of his chest. The hoodlums they then jumped back into the Axio and made good their escape. Oyster Boy, he died on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, 10 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. So, like I said, the St. James police, they have taken a guy into police custody. Like I said before, I'm not going to show you or tell you who this guy is as yet because I don't want to interfere with the police investigation. If and when he's charged, I will certainly be updating this story. Stand by for that. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, that guy on your screen. His name is Jeremian Samuels, but he's popularly known as Hydro or Jerpy. Jerpy is said to be about 35 years old and he's living at a place named Kilmory, Luana or Brampton in the parish of St. Elizabeth. It is said that for a while now, Jerpy, he has had mental issues. He's also said to be very violent. In the past, Jerpy, he has attacked and seriously wounded relatives and even a neighbor. That man on your screen, his name is Mr. Curtis Samuels. Mr. Samuels, he was born on August 16, 1963. 60 years old and he is Jerpy's father. We are told that Mr. Curtis Samuels, he was last seen alive on Monday, January 29 in the afternoon. He was not seen all day Tuesday. On Wednesday, persons became concerned and checks were made at Mr. Samuels' house. We are told that Mr. Samuels, he was found in his home wrapped up in at least three sheets. He was also found with two large wounds to the back of his head. The police, they commenced investigations and the son, Jerpy, he was taken into police custody. Jerpy has not been charged but investigations are continuing. We are also told that either yesterday or Thursday, the police, they went back to the house where an axe, which is suspected to be the murder weapon, it was seized by the police. Now, if and when more information becomes available, I will certainly be updating this story. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick silver sin. Come now the land of the gun East and north and south to the town Country and 
town man a play a blood a run Murder, don't you be able me hear them a murder Cut it out, tell them no go no further Man a dead like cans and bird ya Who no listen them a word ya Crime it a mash up Jamaica Criminals 